WBTC Radio Detroit. You can find us on Facebook, YouTube, X, and our website, www.wvtcdetroit.com, or download our WBTC app from the Play Store for Android users and the App Store for iPhone users. everybody welcome to another week of sunday throwback i am your host yes i am larry whitfield and i'm so glad to be with you on this afternoon listen i need you to like and share if you are on facebook i need you to like and share if you are on x i need you to like and share if you are on youtube i need you to like and share uh and let somebody know let everybody know that sunday throwbacks is on my guest today oh my goodness she is so important uh to the kingdom work of God when it comes to help and resources. I'm talking about Carisha Henderson. She is a full spectrum doula. She's also an entrepreneur and we're going to be getting into good conversation. If you know anything about a doula, you know that they stay busy. I mean, like 24 seven. So you may have a question that maybe you want to pose or whatever. So just throw it on the chat and we'll try and get to it as soon as we can. But right now I need you to like and share. Let somebody know that Sunday throw back is on. I'm so happy to be with you. Lewis Boyd III is out on business. He will be back with us next week. So let's get to some music because I want to get to our guest. This is Pastor Dana Barry and her new release entitled Favor, produced by none other than Craig Mizell and Mizell Productions. And when we be back, did I say be back? I sure did. I said be back. I sh- <laughs> we be back. This is Sunday Throwbacks, everybody. <laughs> Destiny is now on the rise. I arrest every thought of my mind that would hinder your world. 
the Lord is on WVTC Radio Detroit, our station owner, and everybody that's in this room, the favor of God is on us. Congratulations to Pastor Dana Berry and the Intentional Worshipers featuring Jessica Clemens and Detroit's own, our own, my nephew, Kevin Stewart Jr. Everybody, this is Sunday Throwback. I hope you're still liking and sharing. What are you doing? What are you doing? Hit that button. Hit that button. Like Sandy say, hit that like button. Press the button. It don't cost you nothing. Just hit the button. Our guests, uh, they want to know something about you. Okay. I want to tell them something about you. <laughs> Everybody, this is Carisha Henderson. How are you? I'm very good. Yes, you are very good. And we had kind of a, a little powwow before the show started because... Um, because of what you do, you was handling your business for the last three days yes, with Lord. a patient. Yes, Lord. Um, uh, not to give any information about the patient, but just to talk about the job that you do. Because I believe there are people on there saying, what is a doula? It's a doula. So Indeed. I'm going to give you that platform right now to explain what is a doula. So a doula is a support person, and we support women through birth. Um, not only do we support people through birth, um, we also support them through different stages of life. Um, that is what is the terminology behind full spectrum. Mm -hmm. And so you have some doulas who support women through the birth, the postpartum phase, and then you have some who assist women even when it comes to things like abortion care, um, fertility treatments, and even death as well. And so I've taken the time to get my certification and all the things, mm -hmm. even though what I most predominantly do is support women through their birth. Wow. Now, when you say full spectrum, that's like a well, well, I don't want to use the wrong words, but you're well-rounded in that area. So you're not just a person that go down one particular road in the area of doula. You hit a lot of. Yes, I have the qualifications to basically support people in all phases of life, as we say, from the womb to the tomb. <laughs> and so wow. um, doulas lend support in various ways. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's physical support. Sometimes it's mental support. Sometimes it's resources. I also have a trauma certification as well to deal with victims of physical abuse, rape, and all types of trauma that they experience as well. Because sometimes in the birth space, those things come up. Wow. How did you initially get into this? I mean, what was, what sparked, you know what? I think I want to 
you know. So what initially got into it for, well, when I was eight years old, I was always interested in babies in the womb. I mm-hmm. was always curious about babies in the belly and just how it worked. And so that made me have a desire to be an obstetrician. And then when I got to college, um, originally I thought I was going to be pre-med and Mm -hmm. be an obstetrician or gynecologist to deliver babies. Mm -hmm. And my second year of college, I got pregnant with my daughter and she became very ill over time. Um, She had a lot of breathing issues. And so because of that, we spent a lot of time in the hospital. And in my time there, I realized that the nurses actually spend more time with the patients than the doctors. So then I knew that I no longer wanted to be a physician because they weren't really a huge part of the process Mm -hmm. and the healing. And from there, um, I went to school for nursing, stopped, quit, spent more time being a mom, focused on other careers. And I started um, taking care of elderly people. Mm -hmm. And so that led me to being a caregiver for the elderly, which led me to eventually starting my own business. And that led me down First Alliance Home Care, which is my home care company in Southfield. Yes. I've been in business for 10 years. And from there, I kept being drawn by my friends and people that I knew to support them through their birth. Mm -hmm. And initially, I didn't know much about the terminology doula, I just knew that I loved birth work and it was very, um, it just stimulated me. It was just something that always was within me. It was calling me. And I basically answered that call. I decided to become a doula and I got more into learning about the training and what it means to be a midwife as well, which Mm -hmm. some people mix up with being a doula. (laughs) Yes. Explain that a little bit because I, (laughs) So, Somebody just kind of threw that at me about uh, what's the similarities or the unsimilarities, if that's a word. OK, so a midwife, they actually do the delivery, just like you have a doctor and you have a nurse. Mm-hmm. The nurse does a lot of the work along the way with the patient and they spend most of the time supporting the patient. The doctor comes in, do their thing and then they're gone. Mm-hmm. The midwife, um, no shade to the midwives, they do their thing too. <laughs> but And I eventually want to do midwifery. That yep. is what's really calling me. Um, but they handle the delivery itself. Mm-hmm. But where I step in my role as the doula is I come in, hopefully a woman calls me early within her pregnancy. And so we build up that prenatal care. I give them prenatal education along the way. Mm-hmm. They learn about their diet. Um, what it takes to be a mother and parenting courses. I also offer CPR training for some of my parents. I think that it's important Mm -hmm. that everybody knows how to do CPR, choking prevention and things like that. That's also important. So there are also other credentials that I hold as well that have come into play that I've gotten in other jobs, but basically Mm -hmm. have brought it over to my doula services to make it more well-rounded so that parents can get the full benefits of everything that is to be a parent. Because, you know, there is no book right. to be a parent, but so getting some of that prenatal education, knowing about your pregnancy, what it takes to sustain that pregnancy mm-hmm. and those things is what helps you learn things along the way to, to have a better outcome. Mm-hmm. And that's a big thing for us. You know, the main reason why um, doulas are so important is because there are a lot of health disparities. There's a lot of unfair treatment in the medical system as well. Mm-hmm. And so we're also a huge part of our job is to advocate for our patients. Sometimes physicians force women into C-sections and we're really trying to decrease that rate. We're trying to make women have the vaginal birth that they want to have Mm -hmm. versus somebody just telling them, oh, your body can't do it. So you need to just get this surgery and get it over with because there are other um, things that come after that that aren't good for your body. Mm -hmm. And so we want the best outcome for the baby and the mom and the dads, too. Now, because I because you're an advocate for the patient. And it's like sometimes the healthcare industry, and again, no shade, but we're just trying to understand this. They'll say they should do this and you will stand up for patient and say, no, it, it, it's. Yes. We, um, so so yes. when they see you coming. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not always well received. Uh, that's what and I wanted to ask. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's a big part, yeah. too. Um, doulas aren't always well received, but I think that it's important that we also uh, govern ourselves accordingly. Mm-hmm. I know that I'm going into a space where I may not um, 
be favorable for what the doctor is saying, but I also am very intentional about my personality, my delivery. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so that we have a clear understanding. And that's what we're trying to work on too. myself and other doulas that I know. We're trying to bridge that gap between the physicians, the hospital staff and doula services because we're not against them. We just want what's best for our patients. Right, right. That's very important. For those of you that are tuning in, we are talking to Carisha Henderson. She is a full spectrum doula, and uh, we are talking to her about what she does. Now, I want to ask this question, and then we're going to get to some music. And this is kind of a, uh, it, well, let me just ask it. Okay. We all know Sarah in the Bible, mm -hmm. right? And we know that she was of age. She was a she one. Was. Yes. She was. Okay. In your experience, have you ever ran into a Sarah? For sure. For sure. I'm trying to be Sarah. Let's, let's be clear. Let's be clear. Okay. I know my husband's tuning in. He know I'm trying to pop one more out on him. Um, and I'll be 44 this year. So I have come across women 51, 46. Mm -hmm. And they have no problems with their pregnancy. They've had no issues with their delivery either. And so um, I just want to say the devil is a lie. <laughs> and if you want to have a baby, don't listen to them telling you that 35 and up, oh, you know, they put this stigma on you, advanced maternal age or geriatric pregnancy. And we're trying to really um, eradicate that terminology because it's negative. It's negative energy. They actually say that? They do. Wow. They do. It's actually a term. Um, they either say you're AMA or you have a geriatric pregnancy. And they classify that by 35 and up. Now, what now is there a reasoning and we get into some music, y'all, but is there a reasoning behind that? I mean, is there a reasoning behind them shunning a person at that age by um, saying something like that? So what we do know in medical research is that a woman is born with a set amount of eggs and at a certain age, those eggs decline. Mm -hmm. Likewise, just like males and their sperm, there's an age that those things decline as well. But it doesn't mean that you can't have a baby and you don't have good eggs still left. Mm -hmm. And so because of that, they just try to discourage you because we also do acknowledge that there is research that shows that the older you get, the more you are likely to maybe have some eggs that may not have um, great chromosomes yeah. that go with those genetics. Yeah. And so those things are why they try to avoid older pregnancies. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. This is amazing, Sandy. Yes, we're talking to Carisha Henderson. Listen, if you got a question you may want to put on the chat, go ahead and do it. We're going to get to some music uh, right now. I'm going to uh, have a throwback moment here, and I'm going to take you back to the late 80s. This is Pastor Derek Brinkley. Y'all know this song that he came out with. I believe it was written by... Uh, Pastor Daryl Ford, this song is entitled, Yes, it was done in the late 80s, and then he redid it later on in the 90s. This is Yes, Pastor Derek Brinkley, uh, Apostle Derek Brinkley now. Uh, but when we be back, <laughs> there we go again with that be back. <laughs> What you kind of day me. is this? <laughs> this is Sunday throwback. That's what kind of day it is. We be back. <laughs> Jesus 
Yes. Uh, somebody said that was a good throwback. Uh, was that Roy? Yes, sir. That 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 there was. Yes, he is still around. Yes, he is still around. He is pastoring. Um, he is an apostle now. As a matter of fact, I seen him preaching uh, some time ago. Awesome man. Uh, and he still has that range, sir. He still has that range. Everybody, this is Sunday Throwback. I'm your host, Larry Whitfield. My guest, Carisha Henderson. We are talking about uh, the ministry, because that's definitely what it is. It is. Ministry. Now, the question was posed off, uh, uh, and I want you to tell them, because somebody may be answering it, and I mean, asking it, and didn't put it in the chat. So, uh why do we need you? So a person would need a doula for various reasons. Um, whether you need education about mm-hmm. your pregnancy or whatever you're going through. Um, I know we're talking mostly about pregnancies today, but we already addressed that. I specialize in different things because some people also need to know, think about their fertility meds, how they affect them, how they're going to affect their life. Some people go through um, changes and different things like that that they don't want to understand. Also, some people go to birth alone, and that's a very um, lonely space, you know, to to do that alone. It's just traumatic. And then everybody's not happy about their pregnancy either. You have teens, which is really the demographic. Teens and young adults are really my specialty, my mm. special group that I love the most. Yeah. And so everybody's not happy that they're having this pregnancy. So they don't go into the birth space with the support or the confidence that they need. Mm -hmm. I was a teen mother and there was a a lot of negativity um, 
that was being thrown at me about being a team mom. And you go into it like, oh my God, this is the worst decision I ever made. It's going to mm -hmm. tear my life apart. Am I making the right decision or not? And for those who have, you know, a okay OK life, the other reason why you need to do it is because, again, medical staff may tell you one thing that's based on old science, mm -hmm. not new evidence based research about the type of birth that you want to have. And I think that it's important that everybody has respect that that space is your body, your baby, your birth. Mm -hmm. And so you get to choose how you want to birth. You don't get to just tell somebody Oh, because you had a C-section the last time, you have to have one this time. And that person really wants to vaginally deliver. It is possible. And so for somebody to just tell you that, it's unethical. And so your doula is there to give you that education, advocate for you, mm -hmm. and advocate for what's right. So you're always uh, studying. You're always looking for ways. You're always looking at new information uh new science or whatever and not just yes these are the set rules of pregnancy because it yes. changes um also to uh pregnancies are different because the person is different and the way their body yes works. your body changes yes and not only that you also have um situations where I don't always, I always try to be in partnership with physicians that I know mm -hmm. are going to support moms and what's right. Mm -hmm. A lot of times you have sometimes lazy staff members. I've seen doctors decide this person getting a C-section because my shift is about to be over. Are you serious? And I need this to be done wow. so that I can move on with my day. Or I need this to be done before I go on my vacation. So I'm just going to schedule this mother at 38 weeks when there is no scientific reason why you need to give them a C-section. And so these things well, are out there. They happen way more than what people talk about. No, I'm playing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing. I'm that. Yeah. So because of that, those are things that we are up against in the medical mm -hmm. system. Wow. And so that's important to me that women and all parties involved, you mm -hmm. know, support persons and things like that as well, get to have what's right. I have a question. Um how do you handle and and I say this because you're married, you have uh, children, you have a family. How do you handle um, or what are the methods, if I can put it that way, of handling such a schedule when you get calls in the middle of the night or, you know, you're you might be and out. for three days. <laughs> right. Right. I mean, you just came in here, you know, and I didn't want to go there, but she went there. So we're going to go together. Okay. You just came in from a three day uh, venture with a patient that yeah. needed you for three days. Yeah. With all that family, wife, mother, how do you balance, balance all? all? Yes. How do you balance all of that? Um, so being a doula, the important part of being a doula is also having your supports, just like the person that you're being a doula for needs support, you mm -hmm. need support, whether that's your family, your loved ones, a balanced schedule, work life balance is very important. Me personally, I try not to take more than two clients a month. Mm -hmm. I try to take a person whose due date falls between the first and the 15th. And then my second client, maybe the 15th, to the 30th. Mm -hmm. So I'm not in conflict. And typically you're in a birth, you're only taking away maybe two days of your time and sometimes only one. You're going to go to the birth typically depending on the circumstance. If they have good support people within their family, I may not get to that birth until the person, let's just assume they're having a hospital delivery mm -hmm. um, until they get to maybe four or five centimeters dilated. Or if they're really having a problem with pain management. Mm -hmm. And so if they're having a problem with pain management, I'm coming in, I'm doing different techniques that I've learned to basically alleviate that pain so that we can try to avoid some of the medications that aren't safe for the baby or safe for the mom to have. Mm -hmm. Or medications that we know have found by evidence-based research that they will lead the mothers to C-sections. Now, um, um, well... How many of your experiences do you have at a patient's home? Actually, this birth that I just experienced for the past three days was my first home birth. Really? Everybody else has been a hospital birth, mm -hmm. but I have a 0% C-section rate. Wow. So 
that to me speaks volumes for why a person should have a doula. Y'all hear that? There is a question. Uh, it says, do you feel the black community is not receiving doula support? They should be receiving. Uh, most definitely. The community is not receiving the doula support they should be receiving because it's not predominantly known. In past times, um, doula support was really dr more driven towards Caucasians mm -hmm. who were rich. Mm -hmm. And that's why people don't know really about what a doula is. Mm -hmm. It's been around for years, mm -hmm. but people are now becoming to know more about it because some of the other states have allowed it to be cleared. And so the state of Michigan has just passed the law January 1st of 2023 to support doula services for all Medicaid births. Was there ever a name uh, other than Dula? And then maybe the name was changed. No. It's to say why a person would know, you know. No. So what um, <laughs> Dula has always been Dula. Dula um, derives from woman servant. Okay. And um, historically, that has always been the terminology. Now, some people may be more familiar with the term granny midwives. And so granny midwives were the black women down south, mostly that delivered the babies, mostly for their white counterparts, as well as in the African-American community as well. And so because a lot of women over time apprenticed and took time under the granny midwives, that's where those who didn't desire to necessarily do the delivery, but still be a mm -hmm. part of the support mm -hmm. came more into play with doula work. OK, so. In the movie Big Mama, was she a doula? Oh, was she? <laughs> <laughs> I'm being, she was, I'm being she silly. Was just a granny. <laughs> Everybody, we're talking to Carisha Henderson. I want to give a shout out to her husband. If you're watching, man, hey, I commend you, man. I commend you for being the man that you are supporting her uh, in this venture that she's in. But listen, let's get to some music. And when we come back, we're going to a break after this. And then we're going to come back uh, with our doula, Carisha Henderson. She's going to talk about how you can get in contact with her. You could be pregnant right now and you need to be uh Reaching out to the same Or you could already have your pregnancy and need a postpartum doula. See, see <laughs> let's get into that. Let's get yeah, into it. Let's definitely get into it. This is God did it. Yes, he did. By Evelyn Turrentine AG. And when we come back, we're going to break. And then we're coming back to her. This is Sunday Throwback, everybody. Oh, yes, he did. Oh, everything 
Hi, I'm Edna Bell. Please watch me on WVTC Radio Detroit at 4 o'clock every Monday. WVTC Detroit is your place to be. Edna Bell, the Community Bell Show. I'm your host. We are WVTC. What <laughs> Detroit Gospel Internet Radio. What it is. What it is. We're gospel music. Preaching. Teaching. What it is. <laughs> Encouraging. What it is. All up in what it is. the community. What it is. W-V-T-C. In your neighborhood. It's what we do. What it is. <laughs> Go to your Apple or Google Play Store and download the WVTC Gospel Radio app today. You can also say, Alexa, play WVTC Radio Skills. Would you like to play WVTC Radio Network? Absolutely. Download it today. Yes, everybody, we are back. Download that app. Hey, you get 24-hour gospel music. Oh, my goodness. Great gospel music. I'm talking about a little CCM, a little traditional, a little contemporary. You get it all 24 hours. Uh, so make sure that you download that app on WVTCDetroit.com. Yes. Uh, Teresa. Teresa said, Teresa Acton, shout out to Teresa out of Lexington. Uh, you said that some mothers aren't happy with their pregnancies. Um, is counseling also part of your ministry? For doulas in general, um, you have to have certain training. Mm -hmm. And we don't necessarily counsel per se, but we do know how to manage women who are going through some of those emotional hard times. Mm -hmm. And we also, a good doula has to be a great referral source. Mm -hmm. And so I don't ever take on anything that I'm not credentialed to do. I personally have taken the time to get trauma certified and to mm -hmm. deal with some of those things and how to manage them. However, it, I also have to be able to do warm referrals to great counseling services if I feel like, okay, I went over these things with the mom, but we're still kind of seeing that she may need some further help. Yes. And that's when we make those referrals. Okay. Okay. Great. Great answer. Great question. Here is another one from Danielle Hall. She says, this is very good information in general, but especially for the black community. Uh, thank you so much for your expertise, Carisha Henderson. You're so welcome. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Everybody is understanding how important this is. Now we touched on this, I believe in between the uh, songs, Talk about postpartum. Okay. So postpartum, when we talk about postpartum, it's not always specifically talking about postpartum depression. Mm -hmm. Women get postpartum doulas to support um, the assistance that they need after the birth as well. You also have some issues sometimes, for an example, when a woman does have a C-section, mm -hmm. they have to adjust to their new life. They can't always go home and go back to stairs caring for their children and things like that. So they may need additional support because of their physical limitations now that they have. They also may just need a nap. You know, being a mom and a new, being a new mom especially is exhausting. And then you think about a mom who already has children. She's coming home to those children. So she's not getting the rest that she needs to be able to take care of herself well and also take care of baby. And adjusting to life. So sometimes people hire a postpartum doula to take on a couple of hours to take the load off in certain areas so that they can be a better mother. And yeah. so postpartum doulas are good for those things as well. You know, the United States is really uh, experiencing um, a maternal health crisis and with the uh, mortality rates that are spiking in recent years. Um, 
This is the highest among black women. How can we get those numbers down? And what is your role in that? So the doula's role in um, getting some of those disparities and issues that we're having down, especially in the black community, is number one, vote. Mm -hmm. Know who is on your legislation. Know who stands for what laws. Mm -hmm. And those things also support what laws are going to be passed when it comes to things that insurance companies cover, mm -hmm. things that they get rid of, mm -hmm. and the support that people need. On top of that, um, just dealing with equity. Mm -hmm. Okay, we all know that at the end of the day, we, everybody, talk, everybody talks about diversity, equity, and inclusion, but what is it really? What are we really doing about it? Yeah. We are getting unfair treatment in the Black community. You get doctors who don't want to listen to African Americans regarding their pain. And they they want to throw you pills all the time. Or they want to throw you pills all the time. Yeah. Or they don't want to give you <clears throat> pills that you need. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes, like you said, they're giving you medication that you don't need as well. Those things all play a factor. And so with that, we do try to, again, that's there, there's that advocacy piece. Mm -hmm. And for me, because I also have a medical background prior to me becoming a doula, I have a little more medical knowledge and insight to things when I'm looking at my clients and their cases and what they're really dealing with. And so dealing with those disparities in the black community, we have to listen to our counterparts. Mm -hmm. We have to be able to be listened to. And that's just not what's happening with the black voices in our community. Yeah. There's a question here. Uh, what credentials do you need? And it, uh, shout out to my wife, Stacy. What credentials do you need to become a doula? You have to take a training. Um, there are many do um, doula trainings out there. Mm -hmm. Me personally, I um, took my training with Donor International mm -hmm. and also Common Sense, Common Sense uh, Childbirth Institute, CCI. Um, there's National Black Doula Association. Shout out to them too. They are one of the biggest African American doula um, companies wow. in the world, and so. There are many different choices out there. You just have to decide what doula program best suits you and yeah. best basically fits the type of doula you want to be. Now, just to speak to that even more, Dona is more predominantly known in the Caucasian community versus the African-American community. But it is my belief that how can I break the system if I can't be a part of the system to learn how I can change the system to build up our African-American network within their community as well. Wow. Everybody, we're talking to Carisha Henderson. She is a full spectrum doula. She's also an entrepreneur. Talk a little bit about the other businesses that you uh, um, have. I'm crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so you're crazy uh, successful. I am. That's a good thing. I am, and God is blessing. Yes. And that I just give all the praises to God. Um, I give praise to my husband too because at the time when I first became an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. I had no desire whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And um, at the time, he wasn't my husband; he was just my boyfriend at the time. But he put a thought in me when I was working for someone else, like you're always managing someone else's company. Why don't you do your own yeah. thing? Yeah, it is. Do your own yeah. thing. You can do your own thing. And I just I didn't believe in myself, mm -hmm. but he believed in me. And so, um. A friend of mine, she lost her job and she was very like minded with me when it came to business and doing and providing care for patients. And mm -hmm. she was like, we just need to start our own company because these people, they just fire us and, you know, just do whatever. And if we're in control, we don't have to bow down to that. Mm -hmm. and I said, OK, you know, this is the second time somebody's telling me. Yeah. And she's like, if you start your own, I can work for you. You know, because she didn't want to start her own, but she wanted right to put that inside of me. And she had that faith in me just like my husband did. Yeah. And so from that, I just prayed and I said, God, if you be for me, who can be against me? Uh, yes. <laughs> and yes. I stepped out on faith and it worked out. Yes. And so that became First Alliance Home Care. And that was my first baby. And then I also always did decor on the side for people. And so from that, 
I started doing Planet Perfect events. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes I do a little wedding decor or uh, decor for different events or reasons mm -hmm. for you, mostly friends and family. But because I've gotten referrals, it has turned into a whole nother thing. Mm -hmm. And then I also do mobile notary services. So I have unfinished business solutions. Yeah. And unfinished business solution also helps entrepreneurs to get their business started. Because there were a lot of struggles that I had in the beginning that I've learned from yeah. how to set up my business, how to set up an LLC, how to set up a nonprofit, how to type up a proper um, non-disclosure, mm -hmm. those types of things. And so now I just assist other entrepreneurs yeah. with their unfinished business. Yeah. I am the solution. That is phenomenal. <laughs> <laughs> that is phenomenal. Sandy, we three out of five today. We got three songs out. <laughs> we got three out of five, so we're going to quit right here. But because I want you to give the people your information, uh, there may be somebody out there that knows somebody that needs you, may have a friend. Girl, I just watched Sunday Throwback, and, the, and he had a doula on there. You need to talk to her. Or you may be somebody yourself that need her. I want you to give them the information and then... I want you to have final thoughts. What do you want to say? What is important that our listening audience need to hear from you in reference to what you do and what the Lord has blessed you with and how you can reach out to them and help them in all you can? First, how do they get in touch with you? So if you would like to get in touch with me, um, the name of my business is Daughters of Rahab, Doula Health and Wellness. You can reach me at 313 Four 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 one two seven, or you can go to my website daughtersofrahab.org. Um, if you would like doula services, and maybe I may not be a match because that's okay. Like everybody, it's not for everybody, mm -hmm. but there are doulas out there that will fit who you are, your lifestyle. You may find something in common with that person mm -hmm. and you have a better connection. And that's why I have a group of ladies who have my back. Shout out to Motor City Doula Association. Yeah. We are all a group of women within the Motor City area that reach out as far and wide, even as far as Kent County, because we go beyond the city, of course. Uh, Washtenaw, shout out to Wrapped in Love, Doula Services, Ancient Birth. Um, there are a lot of people. And then shout out to Birth Detroit. I want everybody to know that doula services are supported in the city. And there are also a group of women that are doing a beautiful thing. Detroit is getting its first Black Birth Center. What? Black owned birth center. Come on here. Right here in the city Come of Detroit. On. And so shout out to the ladies of Birth Detroit. And so wow. at the at the birth center, if you don't feel comfortable giving birth at home, you can have that alternative to the hospital. We don't have to deal with those issues that we face in the hospital. You mm -hmm. can have somebody that's going to support the birth that you want, but you just may not want to do it at home. So Birth Detroit, those group of ladies are building a birth center right in the city of Detroit. It is a very big thing. If you don't know about it, tap in. Because they are really doing a big thing. Birth Detroit. Yes. Wow. Birth Detroit. So when is it set to open? Is it open already? Or it's gonna open is... this year. It's scheduled to open. They're gonna they've already broke ground. It's been building. And so it's right in the city off of Grand River mm -hmm. in um Grand River 96, basically past Livernois mm -hmm. area. And so it's already been be being built. Mm -hmm. They already do birth services as far as prenatal care and things like that. It's okay. ran by midwives. Wow. And so that's the beautiful thing about it. You can get midwifery care and you don't have to worry about all those problems in the medical system. You can come to a place that's going to be safe for you yeah. to deliver and problem free. Well, thank God. Thank God for that. And we would love to get them on WVTC Radio Detroit to talk uh Oh, about it. they would love to. They have Definitely a gala coming up. Yeah. They've been fundraising for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. And those ladies are just doing a great thing. It's ran by me and wives. And I just love it, love it, love it. And I'm going to partner with them. I do some work with them here and there in the community. Okay. But I am so looking forward to doing so much more as well. Amen. Well, we are so excited to have you. Um, honored that you have graced this table at Sunday Throwback. Uh, thank for God for me. all of the work that you're doing in our community and that you are helping our people and just helping people in general. That is considered kingdom work. That is considered winning victory through Christ. And that's what we do here at WVTC Detroit. And we thank God for you. Give us some final thoughts. What do you want the people uh, 
to know? I want the people to know that um, doula services isn't about needing someone to just hold your hand. It's needing somebody to understand. Mm. I think a big part of the work that I do um, is emotional. It is um, a lot of kingdom work. You end up building relationships with people that you don't want to let go. I built some strong relationships with some young ladies in the foster care system who don't have parents. And I brought them to Christ. Mm. Um, So it's just, it's amazing. I can't really describe it. It's just like no other, but get you a doula. (laughs) And if you get a doula, I swear she'll probably become your best friend. You think it's for that moment, but it's going to be for a lifetime. I'm sensing this is a divine connection. And uh, again, we, we thank God for you being here. This, this here, y'all, and and if I can just pray, I feel that we just need to pray and we don't want to get out of here. I'm going to see everybody next week. Father in Jesus name. We just thank you, God. I thank you for uh, Carisha, God. I thank you for her husband and her family, God. I thank you for uh, where you have put her in this time of ministry, God, to help uh, people to understand how important things are, God. I thank you for the work that you've put um on her hands to do, God. I thank you that you are continuing to bless her and to sustain her and to keep her in this area, this very critical area. A lot of times women don't know what to do. They don't know where to go or who to turn to. And I thank you right now in Jesus name that you have such a woman and that you have such women that is like her that are helping uh, people, God. And I just honor you right now that you will continue to bless her hands, that everything she put her hands on is blessed, God. I thank you that everybody that she helps is being blessed. Thank you for her household, God. Thank you for her children, her husband, her family, God. And we just honor you and bless you, God, that you're going to carry her on in this business and spread the good news of Jesus Christ while she does it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Amen. Everybody, we're going to see you on next week, Sunday Throwbacks. God bless. And we will sing the songs of his fame. Forever testify of his grace. Thank you for tuning in to Sunday Throwbacks with Larry Whitfield on WVTC Detroit. Listen, if you would like to become a partner or a guest on our show, please send us an email at lwhitfieldmusic at yahoo.com. That's lwhitfieldmusic at yahoo.com or call 313-879-9752. That number again is 313-879-9752. We encourage you that God is always in the place but what you have to do is get him in your space when you do your life will never be the same thank you for tuning in see you next week the views and opinions expressed on the previous broadcast are those of the authors and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of WVTC Radio Detroit, its advertisers or affiliates. or Google Play Store and download the WVTC Gospel Radio app today. You can also say, Alexa, play WVTC Radio Skills. Would you like to play WVTC Radio Network? Absolutely. Download it today. You're listening to WVTC Gospel Radio Detroit and we're flowing in the spirit.